one. And it's a good thing that they're planning to do this because if if they force out a 5v5 fight, they're just gonna lose. They're just gonna lose. Like straight up. If you don't pick off anyone on the side of NXP Solid and the fight starts, you're 100% set to lose. Yeah. That was, that was well done there, a flicker from the Cho. It was really nice as well that Rene J flickered out because had it been when the Grok first kill fully channeled connects onto him, it will be his finisher, especially with the crowd control from the Shunpo. And look at that, Korai into the front line, Chester also cutting, Chester also re-engaging, and they know that H2O will be untouched. So an X-Play Predator actually took the offensive for that part. You can actually see how Sinag Pilipinas is trying to get the read. Trying to get the read against uh, an X-Play. I mean, in a perfect world, that bouncing ball could have been enough to get the kill on someone. But, I mean, you don't really have the follow-up to put down that uh, that Cho, that Grok, and that Kimmy. So, you're just aiming to stop there. Rafaela is going to go down in a flash. Yeah. Well, we have the match here. Let's see once more. Chester just baiting for a bit. They need to deny the buff. They were able to deny the buff. They were able to deny the buff. It was up to the Kimmy. There goes Denver. Ejector. Very interesting patting from Denver. He curves MB. They're bidding it. Denver in a tight spot. But MB would have to jump away. The Kimmy is ever so punishing. But next play not giving too much. Except for the buff. Against uh, Sinag. Very, uh, well, how do you call this? Masterful showing of control from both teams. They could have gone for the kill, especially on MB if they chased. But... Sinag Pilipinas, they're not gonna budge. They're gonna play this safe because they know that they have to get the Kimi on 100% uptime, especially on farming. So yeah. they just go for the early setup onto the bottom lane, just probably pressure it down and uh, force a reaction coming out here from the side of NXP. Okay, that was quick from the Natalia. But I think the Natalia is dead. Yep. Yeah. Let's see here. Rene J. Denver going all in on to him. Smart missiles will be the finisher. It is the first blood. Killed quite faster compared to Natalia. I'm very curious why the Natalia is not dead yet. I think she was able to uh, get the invisibility. Huh? Okay. So that is 1 1. Who died on the side of. Okay, it's Natalia who died on the other side. But looking at how the pacing of the game is looking. Um, is looking like or feeling like H2O here got the kill. He has the bounty hunter, so it's he's putting it to good use. Well, right now he has one kill on his belt, so that means it's not a waste of time. But yeah. if he gets two to three kills more, I feel that the bounty hunter talent will be justified. So right now there is actually a fight, Shinbu, that's going to happen into yeah, the turtle. Yeah, into the turtle, into the front of the turtle, and that is a very bad position there. But then Natalia, very. Very weird position there. Actually, staying into the front line, hovering into the front line. Well, it is obvious where is the position of the members here of the X-Play Predator. That was a good steal by the Cho. Another kill that to do as well. And that Rafaela, kite back onto Kronos. Yawi into the front line. He has to fall back. Kronos for moving forward. Renegy protecting him. And that is Sinan's lead to take. Now sitting on an almost 2,000 gold lead. Things, like I mentioned to you, Matters, X-Factor. Massive play on the Cho. Yukio Kazuki, he's doing great. He's just showing up time and again, especially on pickoffs. He got the first kill for his team and he got the first turtle skill of the game. So Denver here really trying to get away. He is he is uh, he is gonna get away with the help of the Kimmy. But right now, H2O got two kills. Got two kills already. So what what I'm trying to say here is H2 is probably gonna have a good time in the mid game. Yeah. Yeah. He has the Raptor Machete up. I think so. I, I think that's the Raptor Machete right now. Okay, slow but steady here. Again, next play is the one playing with the backs against the walls here. I think now they're starting to underestimate actually. See like Filipinas. They haven't kept the Cho in check. They can actually punish just the Cho lane, but they're still going blindly onto the lane of the Kimi. Kimi now is. Yeah, Kimi is now totally okay. Kimi is now totally okay. What they need to be careful of is the Cho. Cho is now on snowball. If you look into the items, look into the items, you can actually see that the, the Cho. Uh, I, I think already has good uh, com good full item build on his side probably maybe an endless battle completed here or maybe a BOD that's my guess for that part 
Oh my goodness, seeing the Filipina Tiki even stealing that little wanderer from the hands of H2O. And here comes another fight. Yukio Kazuki going for H2O. H2O here will be the primary target. That is the first takedown. He takes down someone in his behalf on his behalf. That is a one for one. He gets three kills. MB on the other hand trying to run away and look at those dashes. That now, is, wow. Yeah. And they go down. Wow. What a play coming here from the from side Cinex, of Cinex, yeah, Pilipinas. Pilipinas. They're, they're totally shining through in this game. Ladies and gentlemen, well performed. Actually, against Next Play Predator, this is coming to be a surprise against the Doggy Squad. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, that's very interesting. I, I do feel though that uh, Next Play is underperforming for a bit, but still you have to give it to Cinex Pilipinas. They've taken full control of this game and they're not allowing Next Play Predator to awaken and get a comeback. This is H2O's team that they're beating, but again, that's it. That is well played from Next Play. They need to shut down that show because I think it's starting to become the X Factor here. That was the first time that the Divine Judgment hit a punish on that show. So, I'm, I'm really leaning towards, uh, you know, Cine Filipinas because they're not really using that Divine Judgment to its full potential. But I mean, they, that could be the momentum that they're trying to find. Tiki, on the other hand, goes down on the other side of the map. And I really like the control coming out here from Sinag Pilipinas. They're not really stopping on the pressure, and he's going to be the X factor on the side of Next Play Predator Solid. Right now, they're not in a good place, so he needs to step up as well. Slow and steady here. You got Korai once more. He has the power of nature on. H2 will kiting back. There's gonna be MB. They're punishing a lot. Yeah, there is that. Uh, only that Yawi yeah, needs to get the proper setup. This is not good. Cinec Pilipinas is actually dropping some, some uh, actually, n you know, uh, unwanted kills in favor of Next Play Predator. Mm hmm. So, looking at the map, let, let's focus on the map a bit here. You see how the lanes are pushing onto the top lane for the side of Cinec Pilipinas. But what what um, NXP is doing is they're just pushing out the mid lane and the bottom lane. They're not going to the show lane because they know that show right now is really hot. And if they get caught out with the way of the dragon, they're 100% sure that someone's gonna go down. Okay, they catch out someone who's the someone that Korai Korai will go down. And that is going to be the first target, Rene J. Oh my god. Actually goes down fast. Yeah, you have to remember that the last airbender is way better than the legend of Korai. And Korai yeah. here is really not doing <laughs> well in terms of that crack, the earthbender, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see here. Tower dive as well by Denver. Along with Tiki into the front line, of course, Natalia. What? <laughs> Natalia hugging the times, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, but still, you know, at least that gives that gives a lot of uh, free pressure, free space for the Kimi and also onto uh, Yukio, Yukio Kazuki. But again, not needed kills, uh, unneeded engages for that one. You just need to get pressure without having to die, really. For Sinag Pilipinas. See that playing this well, they are the underdogs and they're surprising us. Next play Predator Solid. How do you fight this? This is one of the game these these are the games that Renny J should just cash out, let's say the Kimi and end it there. If they can get the Natalia or the Kimi, that will be a big a uh, loss or uh, like let's say a big damage output loss for the side of uh Sina Pilipinas. But the thing is, even Denver, even Yukio Kazuki is really doing great. So in terms of item potential, they're catching up. So whatever it is that uh, you know Sina Pilipinas is doing right now, they should just keep on doing it. They're not really forcing those 5v5 team fights. They're letting uh NXP do their thing and engage if they engage they just go back and they try to find the stragglers because what we're looking at here is three high-end rice on the side of scene at Pilipinas. so you might want to check the 1v1 setup if you're next play predator solid because you're not really in the best position to go contest for those 1v1s yes yes uh, uh, uh you, you, again you have to be careful when you when you do those kind of 1v1s especially that uh Highly side reward plays should be well calculated at this phase of the game. Flicker by Renajoy. But of course, it's going to be soon followed by Yukio Kazuki. 
Very interesting flicker there by Rene J, especially against the Cho. Underestimating that the Cho still has the Shunpo on. Now, that's a lot of burst coming in from the Kimi because no flicker on the Kaja. No threat on the flicker on the Kaja. Sinag Pilipinas knows that they can shine through this game. The way of the Dragon under the turret, under the base by Yukio Kizuki. He will be running for his life. MB chasing him down. Rene J for the backup. Kronos also kiting back. And that's it. That gives freedom for the members here of Sinag Pilipinas to go for the very first in the winter turret. They're seeing it. They're seeing the victory against the likes of a next play Predator team. And Sinag Pilipina showing us the race of hope. The underdogs here, they're probably gonna take one game off from Next Play Predator Solid. But mind you guys, this is the best of three. If Next Play Predator Solid, you know, gets awakened from their slumber, if they're sleeping right now, it's probably the proper time to take this to a game number three. But I'm not really saying that this game has ended already. There is a probability that we can get a Miracle Engage coming out here from Yaoi and Renegade. And then, ladies and gentlemen, let's see here. 16-9 still for a running game. The lead is obviously on to the side now of Sinag Pilipinas. They're sitting at around 12,000 gold lead. But still, anything can happen. H2O is not that behind. 424 on this carry. But Kronos, ladies and gentlemen, the doubt of the Kimi now cleared. Now cleared of all doubts. That's the Kimi. And Yuki Kuzak is still pressuring up top. That leaves the Tams not available for this fight. Denver getting the attention of Yaoi. Tiki is also there. Next play, Predator is not accounting for Tiki. They can get silence here from the back line. Next play, Predator will lose this fight, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be Yuki Kuzaki along with Tiki. And of course, Kronos with all the free in the world. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Multiple knockups. MB will be late for the party. It doesn't matter. They could just transition between lanes. All the backline damages, even H2 is already gone. You know, Kronos is just getting the attention of MB. MB doing what he can, and even Kronos has enough firepower to kill MB on that part. Immortality. No, there's no immortality. Auto base is open, and that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, Team Sinag mm -hmm. Filipinas gets the beat against next play Predator Solid. Nice. Mm. <laughs>